Good morning everyone, welcome to another vlog here on the World of Coasters. Today you join me on my own at Fort Park Resort. Um, been meaning to come out here since it's opening day but I've been a bit delayed this year. Sadly it's just me today, no Louise, she's at work. Uh, but I've mainly come out just for a short little visit to have a look around the resort because out of all the theme parks in the UK, uh, especially the Merlin ones, uh, this has been the most forward with its Project Sparkle. Uh, now you've got some opening shots coming across the bridge and all that. You can see Hyperia. Um, there are whispers of it testing very soon. Testing is imminent. No signs of the trains yet, but I reckon it'll be very soon. Uh, so we'll go all the way around the park, starting off with Swarm Island, which I'm heading to now. Uh, we'll see what's going on around the resort, because like I say, there's been so much done to the park over the closed season, which Fort Park really did need. A bit of TLC and... Uh, yeah, I'm excited to see. So yeah, we go round the, the island with Swarm Island first, then go round into the Mitty, have a look at uh, Big Easy Boulevard, uh, Nemesis, and then finishing round by Hyperia and Colossus. So yeah, guys, quite excited to get back out here today, actually. Uh, it is half term currently, so I don't know how many rides I'm going to do. Let's have a look at the Swarm, because that is one of my favourites here. So we'll start off on Swarm Island. So up until the opening of Hyperia, this was Foot Park's most recent uh, roller coaster opened in 2012. Funnily enough, I was actually here for the opening day of Swarm back in 2012. And I do intend on being at the opening day of Hyperia. It's just a fact of uh, getting the time off work. Straight off the bat, the Swarm Supply Shop is now reopened. This has been closed for a good two or three seasons. I want to say post uh, pre-COVID it was closed. Uh, so let's have a look inside because I know they opened the Swarm the saw shop last season. Uh, but it doesn't look like a lot's changed in here. It's just a basic Swarm merch or that sort of thing. Uh, I do always like the merch that Fort Park bring out. So not a whole lot has changed here on Swarm Island, other than the shop really opening. It's quite a bit that actually needs a bit of TLC, if you ask me. Uh, but it does have the apocalypse kind of like vibe, so they get away with it. Uh, they did add a lot of stuff a couple of seasons ago, you know, like with the legalised aliens, boards and all that sort of thing. Um, so really, they can be forgiven on this part. I don't know if that's new. It's not the problem they're being put off there before the speed board. But God, it's loud. It's nice to see they're using some of the planters in the park. Long been neglected. It's kind of like when you come out into these main areas, you can really see Hyperia from like every corner of the park. The Flying fish could use with a bit of work, yeah, a little bit of us here along here. Could use a paint job yeah, up here, uh, but I suppose they're not really focusing on this area of the park. Um, this has been needing it for a little while, right, to be honest. You can see the fences need painting, but I think this project sparkle is going to be a couple of seasons. One thing that I have done though, at long last, is replaced the sign for Flying Fish because that was heavily sun faded and it looks much better for it. Also, a new snack van here with the vintage Wolves logo on it. I like that because obviously a Mitty is set in the past. Uh, just really cool to see the old like Wolves logo and colour scheme. Right, so one of the biggest changes to a Mitty this year is they totally rebuilt the um, Pier 13 bridge, giving it its more original look. Uh, looks a hell of a lot better for it and uh, further around the corner they've got rid of some of the huts so you can see the ride better but yeah I like the Pier 13 it's much simpler um, and I imagine it will last longer they have still left this area open but not you can't go underneath it you would have thought when they were rebuilding it they put some panels up to stop you going around there uh, but yeah it doesn't look like tidal waves running today um, Although, yeah, we've got some paint work done to the trough as well, which is good to see. It's lovely to see this ride get some TLC. It is a brilliant ride during the summer heat. Sweet and candy, honesty, I'm the very 
well, that looks 10 times better than it did before. I was always a little bit annoyed when I put these stands up in front of it. It's like caricatures, face paintings all along here. It's great that this is now open, because this is such a good ride to watch when you're not actually on it. And now you can kind of see all the way over to the ride, out to the trough. Hopefully, they'll be getting that flame effect working. Um, as that was promised back in like, I think it was 2020, 2021, uh, when they put that in and it just never worked. So as we go into Big Easy Boulevard now, it's Mardi Gras season here. Obviously the old Angry Birds land had a real good paint job on it. All the rides are in a refeam. They've got the old um, stage up actually. This was from 2021, the Mardi Gras stage. Uh, all of the Angry Birds theming is gone, thank God. And uh, it looks a hell of a lot better for it. Uh, so all the rides have been refemed. Uh, looks like, like I say, the Mardi Gras theme is just a pop-up theme at the moment. Uh, but the King Peaks bumper cars has been refeamed to Big Easy Bumpers, uh, which has a gas station kind of vibe to it. Uh, really liking what they've done. I do like over here, just get around this crowd. Um, the gate of gasoline actually has the signage in it. It says it's closed though, but there are people on it, so um, don't know what's going on there. But as you can see, the bumper cars have been repainted and they're now themed to cars uh, with number plates on them. One thing I will say about this area is they really have gone to town with the food this year. They've got multiple units up. Um, just, well, I say multiple, they're not free, but it's better than it has in last seasons. It smells really nice, actually. Over here, we've got the Sunset Cinema. Uh, I don't know whether this is open today, uh, but we'll have a look at the new 4D show here. Uh, it's Ready Player One, the 4D experience, which is based on the film. Um, I think it's for the race sequence, but I'll let you know later when we go on it. Uh, apparently, the first show is at 12. So full park show in tribute to Pirates 4D here, which is pretty nice. The original 4D attraction in here with this facade, and then they've just got some storefronts along this. All we got here, Sax in the city. So all the jazz and blues music that you find in New Orleans. I think I might go on Detonator first. I do love the 2001 Farby Drop Tower. So one thing I've always wanted them to do with Detonator is to change it for an intermin gyro drop. Get it up to a couple of hundred feet tall. Uh, capacity would be huge on it. I think you get about 40 riders on the um, intermin versions. But this Farby one actually is quite forceful. It's definitely the best drop tower in the UK. Not that we have many of them left now. Uh, but yeah, fully refeamed to a fireworks factory. Um, I like how they've actually hidden the like almost temporary look of Detonator Club. It is a um, mobile ride, which they can move if they want. It's not actually a permanent, permanently set up ride, it is a mobile attraction. It doesn't really help when they have all their signage saying the rides are closed. It's not the first one that says it's closed, but it has got a bit of a queue. I don't know what we're going to bother waiting for this actually. Now it's queuing right through here, but at least it's got a decent uh, re themed queue. Uh, we're probably looking at about 20, 25 minutes from that point. Uh, operations aren't the fastest, so yeah, I'll give that a miss for now. Well, one thing they have changed with Detonator yeah, is new restraints, but they're still the big old clunky ones. Uh, but they've gone black now, which would be much better because the red ones really got sun faded. Uh, it's odd because they're holding people back here. I don't, I don't quite understand. Maybe the queue isn't as long. Oh, right, I see. So they're holding people over here, and then they board. You don't go around the edge now. Okay, that's interesting. So yeah, the queue actually doesn't go all the way around to the left now. It's literally just round there and you board from where you'd enter the platform originally. Well, a 15 minute wait there for Detonator didn't look as bad as it first thought because like I say, the um, queue doesn't go around the edge now, kind of just goes straight up, which works a bit better because it never used to fill the queue quite as much. Now I'm going to head over to the Admitty Speedway now, uh, where Stealth is located. 
probably not going to go on this one at the moment because it is sporting a 45 minute queue uh, but I know they've done a lot of work around here with the Sparkle Project uh, so let's go have a look well from what I can see just around here it looks like they've done some work like it's nothing spectacular this needs a bit of a paint up um, but yeah they've got some more planters around definitely but one thing I've definitely noticed in all the parks this season they've got more food stands and donut time look amazing obviously got the Bill and Jerry store over here and Stealth, which has seen a lot of TLC, like I just said. The uh, entrance portal has seen a lot of work being repainted as it was quite badly sun faded. So yeah, that tire was quite badly sun faded before. Apologise for the loud music. Uh, they've also corrected the launch time on this because for the longest time it's been 1.8 seconds to 80, but it's at the old speed. 2.3 seconds to 80, uh, which they changed um, to stop rollbacks or to minimise rollbacks. Yeah, a great instrument accelerator, built 2006. Um, yes, yeah, no longer the tallest coaster here, which is weird for a top hat coaster. It would be interesting if one day they uh, make this taller. I don't know whether that would be possible. Hi, this is Big Bob Jones. I just want to tell you about the group holiday promotion they got going down at Bubba Grumps. Clearly having issues with the queue times at the moment, as all of the rides say they're closed. Which they're not. Station building has seen a repaint, looks much nicer for it. Definitely looks better than before, though. It wasn't bad in the first place, uh, just as much pressure, and they've got all these new signages down here rather than the old stealth logos of the little face looking up and going down and throwing up. Do you remember that? Nemesis is certainly sporting a long queue using all of its extension and coming right back to the entrance. It is a little bit annoying that the signage isn't working on the um, like entrance boards, uh, but the app is working and it's sporting a 50 minute queue now. Uh, heading over towards uh, the Darren Brown, or formerly Darren Brown Ghost Train, just have a look over here, see if anything's changed. Doesn't look like a lot has, they've got the mural just up over here. Um, we'll have a look in the mega store and then we'll head down to where Hyperior is. Uh, have a look whether we can see what's going on down there. Do I spy the next ride that needs to be removed from Fort Park? I think so. It's closed. Don't know whether it's actually going to open today. It seems to spend most of its time closed, the ghost train nowadays. A bit of a disappointment, as uh, you well know. Once again, the food outlets are out in force with the veggie box over here. And to replace the halloumi shop, it was formerly here. It's now a uh, Cape Cod, so I imagine they're just like fish and chips and all that. I might end up getting my lunch here to be honest because I haven't actually got anything for lunch. To be honest, it don't look too bad, although that price of $13.95 is absolute robbery. Still got some of the old Infinity merch, which I would have thought would have been discounted by now, but it doesn't appear to be. So as we head down towards Hyperia, you actually got the Cadbury Lodge now open. Looks like the uh, 
the old Sticky Sisters uh, restaurant has been changed. I can't remember what this was. It was somewhere that sold rollover hot dogs and all that before. Uh, it's in a bit of an update. We've got a bubble tea bar and a spiced kitchen street food. Uh, like I say, they've really stepped up their game with the food here. Uh, that'll be Aramark pulling their finger out because uh, in the previous season, it wasn't that great. Well, if I say one thing, they've done a really good job around here at the moment. I'm loving the facade changes on the Burger King and to the toilet area. And of course, you've got the uh, absolutely spectacular looking Hyperia. As you approach it from this angle, it looks incredible. Now the toilet block has seen a full refurb, totally redone, looks much better for it and uh, hopefully the shop will be um, more visible soon. You've got all the warehouses in the way at the moment. Uh, like I said, testing is imminent here. They haven't actually announced as and when, but yesterday uh, they did get the chain running for the first time. So we now know that is fully in place. No signs of the trains on site yet, um, but I reckon testing will probably be towards the end of this week. Typically, when I'm not able to come. Yeah, they basically said once the safety fences are in place, they can start testing. As you can see, some of the fencing along here not quite done. And down by the low parts of the ride, you can see they're digging out the holes for the footers to go in. But yeah, this is a very imposing ride. I hope I can be here on opening day. I intend to be. Turning away from Hyperia's site now, we have the former area of Slammer and the Black Mirror Labyrinth. Uh, that lasted all of about two or three seasons, I think three seasons in total. But it's good to see it gone because there's a huge waste of space if you ask me. They have actually said they're going to be removing the Slammer uh, at the end of this season, uh, which would be good because I wouldn't be surprised if they want to stick a new flat ride to go alongside Hyperia in the 2025 season. As for around the back of um, Black Mirror Labyrinth, maybe that'll become a scare maze or incorporated to the new flat ride that could potentially go here in the coming years. So just over the fence behind where the gift shop's going, uh, they've done some landscape on it, it's really nice actually. And, oh my god, you cannot get over how cool this coast looks. Well, the wind is getting up now, that's when the ride normally starts to get affected. There's a bit of a, a gap in the fence here. I suppose you wouldn't be able to go any further, but it's a bit annoying that you can't actually get down to the old viewing windows. Might be able to see too much through them now, as uh, that's past the shop. But yeah, certainly does look spectacular, Hyperia. Just to the left of Hyperia, we've got Samurai, which is having its refurbishment at the moment. And I am so happy to tell you that they're putting it back to their original colours, back when it was the Chessington World of Adventures. Um, I grew up at Chessington basically, it was the main park we went to, it's my local park and I recall this ride quite well. I was a bit too young to ride it I'm pretty sure but um, yeah that's bringing back memories there, it looks really good, doesn't look like a cheap paint job they've done on it, they've really taken their time, done the restraints properly and all that as well, uh, it just looks really cool in its original colours. So got the, got the capping for the back of the seats here, like I say not just the fact that they've been repainted, these are brand new caps. And over here is the centre hub, I imagine. Still one more of the counterweights to paint in, but other than that, it's pretty much there. Right, so over now, looking into the Lost City, we head over towards Colossus now, the 2002 Intamin multi-in version coaster, the coaster that really put this park on the map, has seen some major TLC this season. So last season they started off the retrack over here with some of the inline twists, and they have done a repaint, but not on this half of the coaster. This half still looks absolutely appalling, but they did say they wanted to get it open, so they're going to split the repaint into two uh, halves. They've done one half this year, and next close season they're going to do more. They have, however, repainted the entrance portal, um, which, I mean, I think it's got a bit too much yellow in it for my liking. Uh, I think they should maybe take the yellow poles back and change the colour so it's got a bit of contrast. I see where they're going with it, but I mean, it's uh, a, bit, a bit too yellow if you ask me. Got some repainting on the female along here, but not on the outside. Clearly they couldn't get a cherry picker to safely do the outside, so it is a bit half done here. 
Um, I mean, yeah, I think they need to aim to finish this, but maybe they're going to do this on the second part of the uh, repaint. Time will tell. I mean, yeah, there's still work to do. It's crumbling in areas, but what they have done does look quite nice. So I've been saying it for absolutely ages in my vlogs that this ride has needed a repaint and it looks so much better for it now. I just turned around here you can actually see it's back to its original colour like it's, it's amazing how much better the ride looks. Uh, just be really good when they finish the job completely. Uh, it would be nice if they got the water feature working, the little face that used to spew water out. But yeah really really happy with what they've done to Colossus. Now the only thing they could do in my opinion to make Colossus any better is to change it with the new lap bar trains uh, which I don't know how long that will take them. I think it will happen in inevitably at one point but I reckon we'll be waiting a while as there's nothing wrong with the trains at the moment and it's typically starting to rain. All right just as the weather's starting to deteriorate now we enter the last area of the Project Sparkle. I was a, the whole park as a whole but a few of the rides here have seen a bit of TLC first one being Rush here which has seen a total repaint of uh, its gas cylinders which were looking kind of rusty and a bit discoloured, they were in a silver colour before. It's also had a new sign put up and uh, apparently it's closed which it isn't, that just seems to be a problem they're having at the moment. If I head around the side we'll have a look at the restraints. Yeah, nice new black uh, harnesses on this one, looking much better for it. The red ones were really starting to look bad, a bit like the detonator cylinders on the side also painted a chip black also done it to the top part as well it's had a full service one ride which hasn't benefited from the project sparkle is in, uh, not enterprise um, it is an enterprise style ride uh, it's the zodiac uh, this was actually removed i want to say about 10 years ago now and replaced with this version it used to be more heavily themed uh, how they've just got a generic one, they haven't bothered to paint it back up or stuck in any, any of the Zodiac signs on it. I'd love to see them do that again. I suppose with this one being quite hidden, not many people notice. Have a look at that skyline. I mean, Hyperia is so impressive. Like, I've said it before, I sat again, that first drop looks incredible. I think we do have a world class coaster on our hands here, although it's going to be a bit short, I think it's going to be such a good coaster. And I can't wait to get out here to ride it. That element, um, the like inverting element out here looks just incredible. Roll on May 24th. So the shop outside the Zodiac here has now been changed to a donut time coffee shop. Uh, closed at the moment. Just so they put a facade up there. The Zodiac, uh, not the Zodiac, Vortex is the other ride that's in a bit of TLC along here. It's had a repaint of its structure. Um, the actual backings to the cars haven't seen um, a repaint, but they're not in too bad condition to be honest, they just need the stencils redoing. Uh, but yeah, they've done all the pattern work on top of the ride and all the way up to the main structure. It looks really good actually. Uh, this is a ride that I commonly forget about when we come here, uh, this KMG Afterburner. Just panning off over to the bridge over here. You can actually see the full paint job they've done in it. I mean, they've gone to town, they've painted the whole thing. Like, they could have got away with not bothering painting the underside of that. You can still see some of the old colour um, down to the right-hand side here, uh, near where the bridge connects to the building. Uh, but yeah, I really like what they've done with the bridge. It just, it looks so much fresher, the park. 
and that's very much what they've gone for. It is so much fresher the park. Full Park has been in neglect for absolutely ages. Apologise for the spits going on the lens because it is raining quite hard now. Uh, but yeah, it's good to see the park is being uplifted for this big year and one big coaster, which will be absolutely incredible to get on. But that just about covers it um, for my coverage of Fort Park's Project Sparkle. Um, haven't been on too many rides, got a couple of the uh, coasters in between filming all of this. Uh, but it is busy because it is a half term day. Yeah, maybe we're going to go over to Hyperion again and see if anything's happening over there before I go. Right guys, so you join me back in the car now. Uh, funnily enough, now that I've gone back to the car, it's stopped raining. But yeah, I've just been in the park for what, I think about three, coming up three and a half hours now. Um, it was really good to look around the park and see what has changed this year. There has been so much love and attention put into um, Fort Park Resort. I really love what they've done with Colossus. I know it's not like the best roller coaster there. It was one of those coasters that definitely influenced um, my love of roller coasters. Uh, now I only did about three rides. I went on um, Destinator, um, I went on Nemesis, I went on Stealth, and I went to go see the Ready Player One um, 4D cinema experience, which I thought was really, really good. Uh, if you've watched films, you'll be able to follow along with that. I won't give any spoilers. Uh, but yeah, really excited for what this year has to bring Fort Park. Hopefully I'll get to here next on an off-peak day, uh, as it is quite busy. Most of the roller coasters have about an hour long queue, um, and Hyperia just looks incredible. Like I said, it's a shame they're not testing it now, um, but I reckon within the next few days it'll be imminent. Probably by the time this video is up, they will be testing it, um, which is good. But unfortunately, at the end of this week, I am not going to be in the country. Uh, myself and Louise off on a mini cruise, uh, which I won't be vlogging unfortunately for you guys uh, but there will be instagram stories on that so uh yeah we won't be in the country to see it testing but we'll be back here as soon as it is testing no doubt anyway guys shorter one today thank you for watching don't forget to hit the subscribe button and i'll see you in the next video until then bye